Hi, my name is Ryan Chase. My family's been involved in downtown Santa Ana since 1919 when my great grandfather had a shoe store called Eureka Shoes. Um, over the last 50 plus years, my family has acquired real estate in the downtown, and since graduating from USC in 2005, I've been very involved. My vision for downtown Santa Ana is really to be unique, cutting edge, hip, and different. Um, I've noticed in just growing up in Irvine, which is about as cookie cutter as it gets, it's track homes, it's strip shopping centers. I, I always wanted something different. I was always into urban areas, into something different, people watching, foot traffic, you know, urban lifestyle. And um, Orange County doesn't have that. And so I said, you know, where can that happen in Orange County? And sure enough, my family is the largest property owner in an area where that, to me, was feasible. So. Uh, while I was at USC, I saw downtown LA kind of come to fruition, or at least growing, and had some ideas from that. And, and when I first came into the family business, I kind of saw some opportunities to do some things down here. So before the before a lot of this uh, revitalization took place, um, the area was traditionally a very immigrant-based, uh, Hispanic demographic shopping area. But over the last 10 to 15 years, there's been a fundamental shift in Hispanic shopping patterns with the advent of Walmart, Target, and other uh, retailers, and have basically figured out that that's a demographic they want to they want to market to. And so as a landlord and someone that was a little younger than my father and my family, I decided to look around the country and see what the, what other places were doing, other downtowns were doing, other urban areas were doing to succeed. And what I came to the conclusion was is that basically entertainment, nightlife, and restaurants were helping drive and help downtowns grow and succeed. Our first step, at least on the east side of town, which is what we call now East End, it was formerly called Fiesta Marketplace, but we, uh, we opened the Yost Theater. That was our first kind of anchor to the side of the downtown. So when the Yost Theater opened, that really helped kind of begin the first wave of, of change to this area. Um, from there, I was able to attract several other retailers and restaurants um, to the area that were very cutting edge, unique, and different. Another huge addition to East End and into the downtown whole was Playground Restaurant. My name is Jason Quinn. Uh, I am here to talk about how uh, Playground decided to end up in Santa Ana. Uh, it's probably the most common question that people ask when they come to the restaurant because it's so hard to believe that something like what we have exists in a place that looks like this. But um, what we tell everyone is, first of all, if we went anywhere else, you know, our, our attitude wouldn't necessarily have been appreciated. Uh, we came to a place where artisans were producing goods, and that's what we believe we are doing. And, uh, you know, artisan goods are not exactly something that should be modified or changed or whatnot, uh, just because someone doesn't think that they like tomatoes or lettuce or red shirts or whatever. Um, and so, you know, we were, we kind of first started sending out feelers and we knew there was a couple places we didn't want to be and um, Ryan Chase called us and said hey you should come check out Santa Ana and all that I hadn't known about this area was that the Crosby was down here and uh, I didn't even really know where it was I just knew that it was a gourmet restaurant in downtown Santa Ana and uh, so we came out we looked at the spot and uh, we fell in love now that we've been open for almost two years uh, it's incredible how many changes there have been you know, every day there's people walking around who are who are really important, who are looking at this area as this in incredible potential. What was so unique about downtown Santa Ana and what we really were going for was to try to be different, to try to be unique and cutting edge and, and, and really frankly something you couldn't find at the mall. If you could find it at the mall, you didn't need to come to Santa Ana. And so the business that I targeted were businesses that you would not find other places. Uh, for example, blends. And so we don't have signs up, it's all word of mouth, and it's all really kind of people vouching for people and, and whatnot. And um, to me, again, it's about the talent. My favorite so. part about the new downtown is like the whole duality of the city, because it's not just like the quote unquote like Mexican side of Santa Ana, and it's not like the new quote unquote hipster side, but you get a little bit of both. It's a lot of the people that actually that like, work here and live here, so having a store here, you kind of see like people go about their daily lives, which is real cool because, I mean, it is their city, so it's nice to be here and see them moving around. So it's real cool just to have all that in one place. I love it, you know what I mean? Uh, I think it's, it'll be good for the city and, and the, the neighborhood because It'll bring a lot of new young kids to the area. Everything that's coming is going to be something that's new and hip, so it, it, I don't see it doing anything bad. Recently, I had Bespoke Cut and Sew Open, which is their first flagship store, and they basically do hat customization, um, which is a very you know big trend these days. P people want customization. They want things that are different, unique, that are kind of personalized to them, and, and Bespoke is the epitome of that. So to have them open their first flagship you know, at East End and downtown, you know, I think says a lot. Um, since Bespoke's opening, we are... Uh, We've got Left of the Dollars record open. So after my many uh, 
trips to look at other downtowns across the country, I noticed that you know, music and especially record shops was something that was kind of unique and different and, and was a part of a lot of these other downtowns. American Barber Shop. Hey, how you guys doing? This is Jerry the Barber. I'm here I'm from American Barber Shop. I'm one of the original barbers. Uh, back in uh, 2011 or 2010, this whole area wasn't a, wasn't a safest place to come around or walk around, especially during uh, this kind of time. From 5 p.m. and up, it was just a, a big, huge change of what it was downtown Santa Ana. And uh, George Mendoza came out here, and he's uh, the owner of American Barbershop. Back in 2010, I was in Corona, California. That was where my original uh, barbershop was. And I had a lot of uh, Santa Ana PD uh, as my clients over there. And they all kept telling me that I got to go down and check out Santa Ana because a lot of cool things were happening. I came down here in winter 2010, this building was abandoned, this whole area was in super bad shape. People thought I was crazy, I, I remember coming here the first time it was at night and the first thing I saw was a couple street walkers on the corner and I looked down the street and there was about a dozen more and this was like on a Monday at 10 o'clock at night, you know, and, um, and but I, 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 I knew that a, a cool historic downtown like this, I mean, things were going to happen. It was inevitable that this area couldn't get better. You know, two years later, what I see, I mean, the place, it's like night and day. You got these cool bars. Uh, pretty much this corner went from being very lonely at night to being completely live. Like to say that there was some challenges getting from where we were back then to today is an understatement. Um, my father's nickname at the beginning of this whole process was El Diablo. Um, and I, I think that there was a lot of um, false falsities and wow. incorrect facts, frankly, on kind of what happened and why it happened. Well, and so basically what we did was we did what we had to do to keep the property alive. And again, if you look at downtowns across the country, they're either dying or thriving. And what was thriving was entertainment and nightlife and ultimately retail. Um, but again, cutting edge and unique, not looking at other places all over the country and what they've done, and especially locally. Um, they differentiated themselves and that was what succeeded. So we just basically followed a model that's worked other places. My family's been accused of kicking the Mexicans out, of the gayification of downtown, of the gentrification of downtown, of God knows what else we've been accused of. But at the end of the day, our, our response is, look at it. We're creating jobs, we're creating tax dollars, and we're investing in the city when no one would and continuing to invest when now. So um, that's our response and I think it speaks for itself. And you know, frankly as well, um, I think a few years ago people thought we were crazy for undertaking this project. The reality is we were just modeling after what other people were doing and succeeding on, but it's working now.